right, you're back down here in your old stomping grounds. Are you happy today? I do enjoy being here. Yes, Jason's down here helping his cousins brew at their brewery and he loves doing this kind of thing. Mm -hmm. you, you seem like a happy guy today. I am. So we're gonna pause and we're gonna do a quick little Q&A, which I will let you guys know, it's definitely gonna only, like we're gonna have to do this in several parts because it's a lot of questions. Okay. And we don't got that much time. So I'm just gonna start off with one that just made me giggle, Jay. They wanna know, have you always been this quick-witted? Used to be worse. <laughs> yes. I suffer from a very rare condition called smart assitis. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure I've had it all my life. We're gonna turn a little bit more serious because a lot of people wanna know quite a bit of things that from your side, like the dementia side. And it says, Jason, what is the very first thing that you yourself can remember that caused you to stop and think that maybe something was wrong? Pit state. Yeah, that yeah. sticks out in my mind too. Yeah, um, my oldest, Kelsey, was, uh, it was time for college and she was saying, so she's thinking about going to Pittsburgh State and I just, you know, dad to daughter, so Pitt State, huh? And then 10 minutes later, so Pitt State, huh? I think the third or fourth time I did it, she was like, are you kidding me right now, dad? And I'm like, what are you talking about? She goes, you just asked me that. And I was like, I did? So anyway, Pitt State. That will always stick out in our mind. All right, Jason, can you tell us what you feel like going through this illness? Like, what would you like others to know so they understand what you are personally experiencing? Um, what was the question again? Jason, can you tell us what you feel like going through this illness? Like, what would you want others to know? So... What do you feel like? Um, I think the biggest thing is, from my perspective, understanding um, I take a lot more patience from Leslie, so there's a, a give and a take. Um, I will get irrational, and I know it, but I can't know it at the time. And I know it's hurtful to Leslie, your caregiver, whomever that is. Um, but there also has to be a back off where I can't control it, I'm going through it. So it's frustrating for me not to be able to control it, but then later realize what I've done, said, or how I acted. That's very frustrating for me because that's never been my personality and I don't like it, but I can't help it. So basically you're answering the question by saying, because they said, tell us how you feel going through this illness. You feel frustration. Yes. Frustration. I, yes, frustration. Jason, do you find listening to your favorite music helpful and relaxing? Absolutely. Yes. Yeah, you use music big time. I do. Um, and or listening to stories. Not, not watching a story, but listening to stories helps me sleep or relax. Um, yeah. Jason, do you ever get scared that you may lash out and hurt Leslie physically? No, I'm not violent. No. What is your biggest fear with dementia? Um, to be honest, my biggest fear is the lack of trust I have fostered with Leslie and her distrust with travel, especially internationally. I really, really love to travel and I'm unpredictable and I get lost and that has created a situation where she's not comfortable doing an unstructured event. Like I would like to Kerouac, which we've talked about many, many times on this channel. But I don't think Leslie's comfortable with that, and I'm not sure if I answered the question correctly, but that's what I think. That's, so you have a fear that you're not going to get to travel anymore because of your dementia? Yes. Because yes. that's something that's important to you. Yes. And it, I mean, it doesn't have to be going somewhere, but like even going on a nice extended hike, like a one-week hike on the Appalachian Trail, um, I doubt very seriously Leslie's going to get in a tent with me for a week, 100 miles from civilization ever again. When it comes to those around you that care for you, what about them gives you peace and allows you to trust them? Um, I have a great close-knit group of friends, uh, Dave, Kirby, Grantham, these guys that, you know, they don't treat me any differently, um, responsible enough to watch out for me and do what I need to do, but also give me a place to go and do something like go over and help Kirby plant a field 
come down with my cousins and brew beer, you know, stuff I love to do. Uh, thank you for your military service. What honors or medals are you most proud of? Oh boy. Um, probably any of the ones that weren't just most, okay, uh, the ones that exemplify exceptional service by my team in a wartime environment. You know, you, you practice to go to war and then when you can go to war, which is never something anybody wants to do, but when you get there, you want to do the best job you possibly can. And every time I've taken a team, either been on the team when I was in Saudi Arabia in early, you know, early 90s for Desert Storm or all the way up through every time I was there, uh, we received a presidential unit citation, which is a huge deal. Um, and that's, it just means you were on a winning team, did a great job, and then were, you know, not that there's any thing, but like the National Defense Medal, you get out of basic training and you would get that because we were at war, that was... Ones just, that you just feel like you properly earned, like yeah, really earned, yeah. not those ones that are not, just kind not of Not the given. gimmies for attendance and mm -hmm. showing up, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Jason, when you are alone, what do you like to think about? Um, I don't know. Um, I like to think about projects either traveling, like what can we be doing, where can we be going, how can we get there, or projects around the house that I want to work on uh, when I'm not sweating. Um, or sleeping. But just, you know, or sleeping. Or sleeping. <laughs> um, but yeah, projects around the house, I really like to think about how we're going to do it, that kind of stuff. I just like thinking about that. Do you feel safe when you're alone? Like if Leslie goes to run an errand, do you feel safe alone or does that even cross your mind? Um, it wouldn't cross my mind if I had not created situations that cause challenges. So I do feel safe alone, but Leslie and I have worked out that if she's gonna run an errand and not like I'm grounded, but I really need to just hang around in the house watch some TV, listen to a book, play on my computer, but I really shouldn't go out and do anything with machinery, unsupervised, or so or cooking. cooking. And it's not the cooking that's the problem, it's the fires in the kitchen that is the problem. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if I'm alone, I, and she'll coach me every time she's leaving, what are you gonna do? I'm gonna sit right here. But if he's gone, if I'm gone for long, it, it, you know, like, it's, extended times where I'm going to be gone for several hours, he gets, he gets the watch over. Dave hangs out with me. <laughs> or Kirby. Yeah, I usually, or have him down at his friend Don's. I do something when I'm going to be gone for a mm -hmm. long time. All right, Jason, of all the places that you have traveled, what was your favorite? That's a tough one. You've been to a lot of places. Mm. The tea house in Bratislava. Oh, that was epic. Yeah. Yeah, Bratislava, Slovakia. It was so awesome. There's that's, you know, that was the coolest bathroom on the planet. That's a weird thing to say, but it was. So that was the coolest bathroom ever. It was like even painted in the toilet. <laughs> like hand painted murals and the urinals matched the wall. Like there was a cherub, and it flowed through the urinal and on back onto the wall. And you're like, really? It was a neat town. Um, okay. You can tell that you love being with your grandchildren. Oh, I don't know if you'll be able to answer this. What has been your favorite visit with them? Ooh, that's tough. Um, I would say our favorite visit was when uh, Emma was, no, when the kids went to Washington to check it out and we got to babysit the kids for a week. That was just, you know, that was awesome. That was a lot of one-on-one -on -one time. I'm, I'm gonna. And then we started a new thing where Hudson comes over once a week, and we get to spend the day with him, and that's been a new awesome thing we're doing. I'm really enjoying that because I get to just hang out with him and. It makes you happy. Yeah. Mm hmm Okay, this is a really good question. Do you ever get to the point of getting too exhausted to put on Showtime, but you feel like you have to? in order to please the others or break the tension? Mm, I definitely get too tired to do that. However, I have become much more reclusive. Uh, I mean, I will just lay down and take a nap. 
and I just won't go see anyone. Yeah, you haven't been visiting with neighbors and friends like you have, and I, I like think like I had in the past. Yeah, like you had in the past, mm -hmm. and I think it's because you it's hard to put that effort. Yes. Yeah. Well, that was loud. Um, we'll do a couple more. Since we were just talking about show timing, what is that? I don't know, somebody's drilling something. In. Oh, okay. How do you feel when you're show timing versus when you're not? Like, how do you feel? Sorry about the noise in the background. Hopefully our microphones are overtaking it. Uh, it's less about how I feel when I am and not. When I am, I feel normal. But when I'm, like, after spending an hour or two visiting and show timing, I'm exhausted. It's just physically, mentally I need a nap. Do you just shut your brain off? Yeah. Two questions. Is your dementia worse at any given time of the day? Evening, for sure. Yeah. I never leave Jason alone in the evening. Um, he's just really unpredictable mm -hmm. on what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. Would you? Do you concur? I concur. <laughs> and what genre of music do you enjoy? Mm. This is easy. That's a diff difficult question. It is? Yes. I would default to reggae That's at all what I, times. Yeah. But I like everything. Reggae, heavy metal, classical. Um, do will do the songs bring back special long term memory? Some of them do, yes. Mm -hmm. yep. Guns and Roses. Yeah. Like do you think about us as kids? No. Not really. No. I try and dis disassociate myself with Guns N' Roses because <laughs> Axel Rose screwed that up so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. My question is, is do you think that Jason is accelerating through the stages of dementia faster now than say last year? Yes. I agree. Like we were just slow and steady. And then this last six months, we've like meow, taken a little dive. Yes. We've picked up a little speed. Yes. Okay. This is an interesting question. And I already know the answer to this, but I'm really curious how you're going to answer it. Uh, hi, Jason. Do you remember things? <laughs> do you remember things that happened earlier? Like, if you made a video this morning, would you remember it this afternoon? Mm. So it varies. It varies. I may remember I did it, but maybe not what it was about or something that was in it. Maybe. Yeah. And then sometimes you know everything. This is the thing with Jason, and this is the thing I talked to the doctor Dance about. Dance yeah, well, that's a long-term memory, but even sometimes the short-term memories just blow me away that, oh, he remembered that. And then I try not to get frustrated because you didn't remember something I just told you, you know, two seconds ago. It's so unpredictable, you know. I might also use that to my benefit. No. <laughs> um, okay, we've kind of talked about this a little bit, and you can kind of expand on it. I know this is a subject you don't like. But do you ever get depressed because your disease has changed your life so much? Depressed, no, but downtrodden, yes. I used to be very independent. I traveled every week, uh, and that is no longer the reality, and that's some, it is the reality, it is what it is. Jason, do you feel the memory loss, or is it just something that we share with you? Uh, not really feel it um, because I'm less conscious of what I, you don't know what you don't know. And however, I've also, I just kind of have to take Leslie's word for it. If we just did this, oh, we did. Um, and I can't get angry about it because I don't remember, but I just kind of have to take her word for it that she, it is what it is. I think it comes back to the overall word that you feel for dementia, which is frustration. Yes. Yeah. Okay, Jason, what are one or two things that you would like dementia caregivers to know about a person who has dementia? Um, we're still the same person. Um, we do require a little bit more patience. Don't be condescending or overly kind. Not that I'm trying to say be mean, but I don't. 
I don't like anyone to be overly kind. Overly kind. Just treat me like You mean normal. like fake kind? Yes. You can tell. Yes. Where they're just like, oh. Yes. Yeah. Like that one doctor. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Is it hard for you to sit and listen to your wife talk about your memory loss? Hmm. I don't know. No. I don't think it's hard. I just don't want to hear it. So does it make it hard? So does so in return, does that mean you don't enjoy doing these videos? No, I don't mind doing the videos, but I don't want to. So like, I, but I think they're asking like when yeah. I'm sitting there next to you and we're talking about your memory loss and I'm pointing out basically in your mind, you feel like those are flaws. Do you hate that part? No. Okay. Here's an example. I want to go to Italy and I have a 10 day trip that we planned 10 years ago and I want to go do that. But then there's a reality session of Leslie's not comfortable with just going over there and like flying into Rome, having 10 days and just kind of going like we might have used to do. But and then I get frustrated because I'm to blame for not being able to go do that. But I still want to go do that. So I guess that's less about bringing it. It puts a fine point on why our limitations are becoming what they are mm -hmm. or road tripping in the camper. You're comfort level with that has diminished 95%. Yeah. So. Okay. Um, this is an interesting question and I don't even know how you would answer it. How do you both cope with missing each other or what puts you back into husband and wife roles? Hmm. That's a good question. Pass. I don't know. So she said, like, does reminiscing about family or past things help bring you back into that space? We do love to reminisce about, you know, hey, when we went to Germany or hey, when we took the girls to New York or hey, when, you know, mm -hmm. so, yeah. Do you feel like that brings us back to our, our original roles? Mm -hmm. I think uh, talking about the grandkids makes us get back to our roles, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a tough question. It is. Yeah. All right, we're almost done. My husband screamed at me for the first time in our 25 years of marriage. It was frightening because I was holding our five month old grandson. Thankfully, he has had no more outbursts since then. Have you experienced any moments of uncontrolled outrage? And if so, how did you both handle it? Well, that's a definite yes, I have. I think I need, and I have tried to tell you this, and sometimes it's very difficult for the caregiver to realize that things are different and you have to back off. Oh, absolutely, I have to is step out of the situation. Mm -hmm. I use diversion tactics like we've talked about in the mm -hmm. past, or I just step away. But the, and then the reality from a caregiver's perspective is the responsibility falls on you to Me. recognize and step away because it's just going to get worse. Because once on my side, once I start spinning out. Yeah, the, I want all caregivers to know that it is, it is all your responsibility. He, he, your loved one does not have the ability to make it right. Once the plates start falling off the spinning sticks, it's, or the spinning plates fall off the sticks, they don't come back on until it. No. Like, you just gotta be alone and decompress and recenter and calm down. Yeah, it's no more a give and take type relationship. I am going to say that the caregiver does have to give the most because we have to. You get the short end of the stick. You have to just like mm -hmm. let the situation go, no matter what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, we might end with this one because we've been going for quite a while and then we'll pick up and we'll do more for another video. Um, but this one is really ironic because yeah, we've been having issues with this. Um, do you have trouble with dream reenactment with sleep? I don't know. Let's talk about the fact that what happened this past week. I'll give you a reminder. Oh, the dog taking a leak in the corner? Yeah. So Jason was dreaming that I told him that the dog was going to the restroom in the corner, which none of this was happening. He gets up, he tries to let the dog out. Can you tell the rest? Yeah, so <clears throat> in my dream apparently, because this wasn't real, still not sure about that. It was not real. <laughs> I love you, but no. <laughs> Leslie said that our little do dog was peeing in the corner. And keeping in mind, he's in bed with us, so I'm like, and then in my mind, if he's doing that and she knows it, she would have scolded him, picked him up, and taken him outside. Um, but in my dream, she did that, and then I'm, like, I'm laying there, and I'm like, well, what are you doing about it? So mm -hmm. I get up. In real life. In real life. 
take him outside, of which he's dead asleep and has no interest in going outside. So, and then he wouldn't go because he didn't need to go. Um, and then Leslie left the door open all night. No, so I set up and I'm like, what are you doing? He tells me what he's doing. Jason had opened the front door. Let the dog out. Dog comes Trying. back, trying yeah. to let the dog out. The dog has no interest. He's irritated that, he, you know, I've gotten him up at whatever, 2 a.m. And you forgot to close the front door. Yeah. And we slept with the front door open all night long. Mm -hmm. Come on in, anybody, and rob us or animals where we live. Yeah, raccoons. Raccoons, come on in our house. Yeah. Yeah. So these are the things as a caregiver. Yeah, I'm a light sleeper. And I heard you open the door, but I had no idea you didn't close the door. I, yeah. I need to like be more vigilant. I have to get up and check. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then he laid back down and went back to sleep mm -hmm. because he had no idea what he was doing. So yes, mm -hmm. he does enact his dreams out sometimes. And sleep at night is just crazy. It's a hot mess. Okay, well, thank you so much for answering these questions. We'll do more and answer more at another time. All right, maybe next week you get the cookies and the tea time stuff. Oh, yeah, he has um, a really great cooking series he's going to do, but um, we just didn't have time to do that one right now. Yeah. All right, well. All right. Thanks, everybody, for watching. We'll see you next week.